There's this epic quote. Show me where you spend your time, money, and energy, and I'll show you who you worship. And that is today's lesson, where we will be discussing worship and are you doing it correctly. And who are you worshipping? Dun dun dun! <laughs> Hi, I'm Brandon. And I'm Jodie Lee. And welcome back to Lesson 7, Sunday. Okay, cool. So in today's topic, we are touching on worship, right? And it's some, there seems to be something in humans that want to worship, right? If you look all through history, people have always found something to worship, whether it's um, through like the religions we often know as today, like Christianity or Muslim um, people, or there's all different types, right, of, of religions. Um, but even in ancient Egypt, where I managed, um, I was able to visit Egypt in January, um, and there they have temples for like everything. They used to worship crocodiles and the Nile River and all sorts of things, right? So there's definitely something in us that wants to worship. Okay, now you might say, no, 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 I don't worship anything. Um, but as we link back to Brandon's quote at the beginning of this, right? What does it actually mean to worship? So if, mm. if we think of how people would worship a god, um, if I go back to ancient Egypt and those temples, they would spend a lot of time and money building something like a temple for this god. They would come and give the god things. They would offer offerings. Mm. They would spend time. They would um, change the way they lived because of what the gods told them mm. or what they thought they told them, right? So those are kind of all things that worshiping entails. It entails looking up to something, changing the way you live because of this thing that you're worshiping, spending time and money on it, right? And I think if you guys think about your life, um, what are you spending your time, your money, and what are you looking up to and what's influencing what you live? Because that's actually what you're worshiping, right? Correct. It might not be a God. It might be um, a celebrity, okay? It might be a, a hobby or an activity that you're well, spending. Why do why do people call them idols? Yeah, exactly. You know, um, because in the old days, what the people used to worship in biblical times, they used to, well, if they didn't worship God, they were bowing down yeah. to idols, you yes. know. So anything that in, in the first commandment, it says you should have no other God before you, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, so God wants us to worship him. So if you're bowing down to idols and in the same way, I mean, if you look at some of the love and praise these guys get, they're amazingly talented and some of them are wonderful people. And it's OK to like a person problem becomes when you obsess over them when you build mm. a mini shrine to them when your wall is covered with it and again that's not the problem you know when your wall you have pictures on your wall yeah. that's not a sin but what i mean like when your entire life is consumed yeah, where, where god doesn't get a portion of your life where you can't talk about god for more than three minutes without going <sighs> but you can talk about this latest pop star forever and ever and ever you need to maybe reconsider where your priorities are Exactly, and I think um, it, yeah, it just comes down to it. Like we are all worshiping something, right? We're all spending our time and our money and changing the way we live because of something. Mm. Okay, so um, if you look, the lesson touches on Daniel three verse sixteen to eighteen. So we're not going to read it um, now. I want you guys to go read it, but it's the story of the three men in the fire, right? Um, and if you guys don't remember, basically King Nebuchadnezzar thought he was great, mm. so he built this big statue and he's like, everyone must bow down to it and worship like me, basically the statue. Um, and it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who are Daniel's friends. They said, no, we only worship God, right? God says in the Ten Commandments, first commandments, you shall have only one God. Second yes. commandment, don't bow down to idols. Exactly. And so they were like, no, God says that we can't do it. We can only worship him. He's the only one that's worthy of our worship. So they're not going to do it. And they were willing to almost, well, they were willing to be thrown in the fire, right? They mm. were thrown in the fire. And um, spoiler alert, God actually came through and protected them. But um, yeah, you guys should go read that story. But they thought worship and who you worship was really important, okay? And the last thing that kind of sticks out to me is when I read those um, commandments at one point, I was like, is God vain, right? Is he like, like I want all the worship, I want all the praise, okay? Because mm. that's what sometimes celebrities seem to to want right you know like, yes. you must look at me buy my things i'm so cool right is god the same because i don't want a god who's like that okay but then if i thought about it if you have this god who is uh if you have this this thing that you're spending all your time and money like celebrities will often take your money and what do they give you in return nothing much mm. right they'll often um, influence the way you live and like sometimes even lead you down a bad path mm. okay and destroy your life um that's maybe a bit dramatic but it can happen right um, where's God? What is he asking you to do? He's giving you a guide on how to live your life that's best for you. He loves you, right? What did he, he want you to follow him and what did he give you in return? His life, right? He came and gave his life for you. Mm. So he's kind of the only one that's worthy of our worship. And he doesn't want us just giving our time and money to something else that's not going to give us anything in return and that's mm. going to destroy us, right? So that's how I understand the importance of worship and who we worship in. I love the story of Job. 
in the story of Job, we see um, uh, not just Satan tempting an individual, but we see how Satan goes about tempting an individual, and specifically an individual who's in the protection of God. Mm. Satan couldn't just walk up to Job and like curse Job and mm. kill Job, you know. Satan had to go to God for permission. But why did he have to go to permission uh, to God when he doesn't necessarily have to do that with like people who are in the world and sinners? You know, well, the reason why is because Job aligned himself with God. Mm -hmm. God never runs away from us. God never leaves us. But God calls us to him where we where he can protect us. The analogy of Jesus being our shepherd and we are the sheep. When a sheep runs away, how can the shepherd protect the sheep? Yeah. You know, it's not because the shepherd doesn't love the sheep and the shepherd will leave the flock and go to find that sheep, mm -hmm. you know. So God will always come to find you. When bad things are happening, you should maybe ask yourself, have you run away from God or has God run away from you as so many people quickly love to jump to? Um, but anyways, so that's the thing about uh, about God. He actually cares for us. When he says, have no other God but me, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like the biggest warning. He's like, if you do that, if you keep me close and you come to me, I can protect you. I can keep you safe. I can look after you, you know. As a shepherd, my commandments are almost like like a fence that keep you close to the flock without mm -hmm. being containing and restrictive of your free will. God is the one who gave us and created us with free will. He doesn't want to shape us and control us, you know. Um, but he gives us his laws to, to help us. When we don't put him first, we start to create idols of other things. And then those things are the ones who control us and the ones they worship. Mm -hmm. It's that verse that says that um, you will either be a slave. You can be a slave to yes. God or you'll be a slave to sin. Yeah. You know, but you will be a slave. And it doesn't mean a slave in like yeah. God's going to whip you because he died for you and he loves you. And Jesus <laughs> is the ultimate servant. But I think that's just something to think yeah. about that uh, God's children, he can protect when they stay close to him. And God will do all he can to protect even those in the world, even those who are sinning, who are ignorant and blind and, and don't have the answers. God will go out of his way to, to look after them as much as they can until they push God away and they want nothing to do with God. Mm. So yeah, I think um, to summarize, like basically all we've been saying, right, is we're going to worship something. You need to think about what you're worshiping, right? Um, and remember that um, from our perspective and what I look at, God seems like he's the only one that's actually worthy of your worship and um, who you can kind of trust with your worship and your time and your money, right? Worship makes it sound old, but who you can trust with your time and your money and to influence your life, okay? So yeah, that's something for you guys to think about. And the whole week we're going to be talking about worship, who it is, but basically remember, it's we're talking about like where you're spending your time and your money and who you're letting influence you. Yes. So I want that to be God, but I hope by the end of the week, you guys will also have thought about it and made up your mind. Um, awesome. Cool. Should we close in prayer? What's tomorrow's topic? Um, tomorrow's topic is worshipping through praise. What? You guys better join us for that. Uh-huh. We'll see you there. <laughs> close your eyes and pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you and we want to praise you and we want to worship you, Father God. Uh, not for no reason, but because you are worthy of it. You died for us. You redeemed us. And as we learned in the previous lessons, uh, you also have God of reconciliation who cons consistently, as much as we push you away, draws us closer to you and loves us and looks after us. So, Father God, why would we not want to love you first? As that song goes, uh, we love him because he loved us first. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I can't remember it exactly. <laughs> but we love you, Father God, and we pray that you'll be with us throughout the day. Amen. Amen. Bye.